The scientific community is making new discoveries with each passing day, from new methods to new breakthroughs or brand new discoveries. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three discoveries you may have missed. Mysterious DNA Results from the Shroud of Turin The Shroud of Turin, also known as the Holy Shroud, is a stretch of linen a little over a meter long. It has a faint, difficult-to-see image of a man on it, showing both a front and back view of the man entirely nude, with the groin being covered by the man's hands. This image is very faint and is hardly even visible when looking at the brown linen though the image becomes much clearer when looked at in the photographic negative. What is so important about the shroud? Many believe the man on the linen depicts Jesus Christ, as some reddish-brown stains on the cloth align with the biblical description of Jesus' wounds following his crucifixion. Though the Catholic Church does not offer any formal comments as to whether the shroud is or is not genuine, the general belief as to why the Holy Shroud is so important is that Jesus was wrapped in the linen as his burial shroud following his crucifixion. The Shroud of Turin has been kept in the Royal Chapel of the Cathedral of Turin in Italy since 1578. Now, the mystery continues to develop, with a DNA study in 2015 revealing the journey of the Shroud, based on the pollen and dust that it seems to have come into contact with. By sequencing these genes, the team is able to tell what people and what plants the linen has been surrounded by. In a nutshell, it appears as though the shroud itself was made in India before beginning quite a tour of the world. It journeyed from Jerusalem to Turkey, across to France and down to Italy, where it has remained in Turin. One of the biggest aids in determining all this information was the plants, as some plant groups are native specifically to certain regions, for example, clovers, horsetail, chicory and ryegrass are native exclusively to the Mediterranean, meaning when these pollens were found on the linen that the shroud must have at least passed through the Mediterranean. Dr. Gianni Barassia, a plant genetics professor at the University of Padova, commented, Here we report the main findings from the analysis of genomic DNA extracted from dust particles vacuumed from the parts of the body image and the lateral edge used for radiocarbon dating. The team found plant genes not only from the Mediterranean, but also some from the Middle East, Asia, or from the Americas, though the researchers have been careful in explaining that some of these genes may have been introduced after the medieval period, not necessarily during. Some of the researchers said that some of the notable crop species identified were grown by farmers and therefore were somewhat common in farming communities and agricultural systems in the Old World namely chicory, common hop, cucumber, and grapevine. But what is the reason for the shroud to have such excessive travel? Simply put, the current belief is that after being made in India, the holy shroud then travelled to be worshipped, with plenty of religious people visiting it as it passed through their countries or regions. Another working theory is that the shroud of Turin was created in medieval Europe, but did not travel quite so much. With this theory, the presence of such diverse DNA is explained by the shroud being something of a religious attraction, inviting people to come and see it from all around the globe, allowing it to be contaminated by a broad range of DNA. The authenticity of the Holy Shroud has been called into question time and time again. Was it used to bury Jesus Christ? How was the image of the man created? Was it even made in the medieval period? Well, in 1998, the shroud was carbon dated to the 13th century. But while some questions are answered, we still have a long way to go to truly determine its authenticity and answer our questions about its creation. Whilst the church offers no comments on the legitimacy of it, having been involved in the burial of Jesus, nor on any involvement of miracles in the man being displayed on the linen, the shroud of Turin continues to be an item of religious importance. It is exciting to find out more about its history and the advancements in gene sequencing and other scientific methodology developments are what make this possible. Earth's water may have come from the sun. When we have been looking at other planets searching for life, one of the quickest ways to rule out potential life forms 
has been to question whether that planet has water. To do this though, we tend to need to start a little closer to home and figure out exactly where our water came from, and could planets without water now somehow develop water a little later on. Now, however, scientists have begun to question a new, previously unconsidered source of water – the Sun. Some astronomers are now suggesting that water may be the result of solar radiation carried to Earth on asteroids billions of years ago. The research was led by a team based at the University of Glasgow, and their study suggests the Sun as a source would match with the isotopic signature of water here on Earth. Their research consisted of atom probe tomography, a method that allows asteroid samples to be analysed. Some of these do carry water, while others do not. The study's lead author, Dr. Luke Daly, said, The solar winds are streams of mostly hydrogen and helium ions, which flow constantly from the Sun out into space. Also supporting this new research is the debunking of the current theories. Professor Bland at Curtin University explained that the arrival of water on Earth via asteroids simply is not an idea that seems viable. The testing of the isotopic signature, which is essentially like the fingerprint of the water on Earth, does not match the fingerprints of the asteroids. This means that while the asteroids may have contributed, there must be at least one other source of water here on Earth. This Glaswegian team did show an isotopic signature matching with the Sun, however, suggesting that the Sun could be a contender in the form of solar wind. The overarching idea is that solar wind creates water on the surface of small grains of dust that then remains on the particles until they arrive on Earth. We still lack definitive answers. The research does give us another idea and brings us one step closer to answering a question that has baffled scientists for decades. Dense exoplanet GJ367b found In 2021, a study was published from an international research team announcing the discovery of a new planet, GJ367b. The exoplanet is able to orbit its star in just eight hours and has the shockingly high surface temperature of 1500 degrees centigrade. This exoplanet is one of nearly 5,000 exoplanets that we know of today. To get an idea of its size, the mass of GJ367b clocks in at half of that of the Earth's, though this exoplanet has a diameter of a little over 9,000 kilometers compared to Earth's 12,742 kilometers. A lot of the research delving into exoplanets is striving towards one rather specific goal, to find a second Earth. Even though GJ367b's scalding surface is not exactly an Earth lookalike, the research shows that scientists are able to specify the characteristics of even rather tiny planets, widening the opportunities for future planets. Co-author Dr. Vincent van Eylen from the UCL Mullard Space Science Laboratory London explained that two different methods were used to determine the size and mass of the planet, both of which were based on the light from the planet's star. One was based on looking at the small decrease in the light from the star that occurred when GJ367b passed in front of it, an analysis conducted using NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, and the other looked into the mass based on the effect the planet had on the movement of its star. Following his explanation, he said, So it's fantastic that we were able to detect this tiny motion from 31 light years away. The study was comprised of 78 researchers, led by astronomers at the Institute of Planetary Research at the German Aerospace Center. The lead author, Dr. Christine Lam, explained that from the radius and mass of this planet, we can tell that it is a rocky planet, meaning it joins the ranking as a sub-Earth-sized terrestrial planet. One of the most significant differences between this exoplanet and Earth is the short time to orbit its star. It takes 365 days for Earth to orbit the Sun. In comparison, one year on GJ36b is just eight hours long. This places the newly found exoplanet in the ultra-short period group of planets, those whose orbits are less than 24 hours long. All this information combined could help to give us some sort of clue into the formation and evolution history of the exoplanet. 
The other distinctive feature of GJ367b is the temperature. Being in such close contact to its star, it receives an extreme level of radiation, more than 500 times that of Earth's. It is exciting to see what else lies beyond Earth, and the possibility of finding a second Earth seems to be not too far into the future. New discoveries are constantly being made across a number of fields. They tell us more about the past and the future, helping us better understand our present. But what do you make of these three new discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.